So now we've talked about how long you should plan uh, to prepare for the USMLE Step 1 exam. The next part that we need to discuss is what are the best study resources to use to try and make sure you get the kind of score that you're happy with. Now, as with any kind of exam, I'm sure you guys have experienced, whether it's medical school or back in your high school or college exams, there's always an amount of variability in terms of how people like to prepare, what resources they find the most attractive and, you know, what fits best with each person. And as with all of those cases, there is no one right answer that you can say, this person did that, that is objectively wrong and my way is better because everybody has slightly different study styles. What I can do is tell you guys about my experience and also the experience of uh, all of the people I know of who have been through the same journey that I have. So within that, the first thing I want to discuss is this idea of courses that people take specifically to prepare for the USMLE Step 1. Now within those, there are live lecture series that require in-person attendance that are offered at various areas, especially where there's a density of applications. So whether that's um, in America or even in some places, India, Pakistan, or in London, there are a lot of uh, courses available that, that are catered towards this specific purpose to prepare for the USMLE Step 1. Then there are also online courses uh, that give you lecture series online with, with uh, excellent providers and you know, clinicians uh, who are experts in this area. The most famous company that offers these courses is, of course, Kaplan, which uh, if you have an interest in taking part in this process, I'm sure you've come across Kaplan at some point. So one of the main questions I get from people is uh, whether or not uh, I think that taking one of these Kaplan courses is necessary to get a good score. So similar to the caveat I provided earlier, I have no doubt that the testimonials that companies like Kaplan use and the personal experiences of people you may know who have attended Kaplan courses, I have no doubt that they're being sincere when they say that they found it helpful and it helped them to get the scores that they did get. And there are people that have scores as good as mine or maybe even better than mine uh, by, by, by a distance who have used Kaplan courses and will swear by the fact that they are effective. So I'm in no way doubting that. The only reason why I take the time to discuss this is because um, these types of courses are extremely expensive. So a, a cursory look at the website will show you that the online live lecture series from Kaplan starts at a price of around about $4,300 uh, in order to be able to access it. Now that is a massive chunk of money. And as we will discuss uh, or have, have discussed in the uh, <coughs> expenses section of this video, um, this entire process in and of itself is already extremely expensive. There are a lot of costs that you have to factor in. So if on top of that you're adding $4,300 for one resource to prepare you for this exam, then I think it's worth taking the time to consider whether or not it's necessary. In my experience, th these Kaplan courses, based on friends of mine who have attended and other people I've spoken to, um, I think they may be too expensive for what you can get out of them. And the fact that there are other resources available that are much cheaper, with which you can also get exceptional scores. So what I would say to people is, uh, if somebody's telling you that they've used the resources I suggest and Kaplan both together or just Kaplan and they've got a great score and then on the other hand I'm telling you I didn't have to use Kaplan and I know multiple other people who didn't have to use Kaplan used only the other set of resources for a fraction of the price and also got exceptional scores then I think um, it doesn't mean that they're wrong, it just means that the Kaplan isn't a crucial part of it that is a prerequisite for getting those kinds of scores if you see what I mean. So that's why I think that to spend that much, uh, it should be something which is core and absolutely unavoidable. And if that was the case, I would tell you guys, listen, just bite the bullet. You have to pay the $4,300 because there's no other way you're going to get that information. I don't think that's the case. So in my opinion, it's not worth going to uh, those dedicated courses and spending that much money because I think there are other resources which I'm going to go through uh, with which you can get all of the necessary preparation to get the kind of scores you need. So part of the problem, I think, with, with the online courses is that, um, or the lecture-based courses, is that much like in medical school, although sitting there in lectures and listening to people can be great when you're trying to get, uh, understand a broad concept, um, I don't think it's as useful when you're trying to retain a granular level of detail to answer questions. And I personally found this myself in medical school that I could go to a lecture and think, <clears throat> okay, I understand how, you know, this part of the respiratory system works. But if you're asking me a question about the exact details and the, you know, the neurotransmitters and the fractions and equations, I'm not going to pick that up in a kind of passive, having somebody speak to me way. For that level of detail, I need to read things and I need to have that uh, actively tested and, you know, record from my knowledge base in the form of questions. <clears throat> so with that being said, I think if you're going to be paying that much money, just to understand some broad concepts, the step one is the kind of exam which doesn't 
just you know require you to know broad concepts. The broad concepts are almost seen as a, as a given, and then what it's going to uh, test you on is the specific NADPH cofactor of a type of uh, process that goes on in biochemistry. Are you really going to remember that from having, no matter how excellent the teacher is, are you going to remember that level of detail just from sitting and listening to one of the lectures? I personally don't think so. So that is kind of at its core why I don't think that the, these kind of lecture-based uh, teaching formats are worth it for the USMLE Step 1. So the other thing about these courses, um, especially the ones that require in-person attendance that happen in these major cities, is that they um, take quite a long time to get through. So some of the courses are four weeks, eight weeks, or 12 weeks, or even longer. They're kind of immersive courses, and they're you know nine to five, you go there, you meet people. It's a great way to make friends by all accounts. But what that means is for you know one, two, three months, you're committing to this being your way of preparing. And I think for that level of time to spend you know two or three months on something, uh, it should be really high yield and have a density of information that makes it really worth your time. Whereas I think with the people I've seen who've attended these courses, you almost get lulled into this sense that, you know, uh, oh, I've done my work for the day because I went to my Kaplan courses. And then, you know, you let yourself off in the evening times and you relax and do other things, but you feel good and you feel constructive because you think, oh, look, I'm doing this dedicated course that's specific to this exam. So I think there is that issue where it can lull you into a sense of, you know, not complacency, but a comfort zone where you're getting spoon fed material and then it loses some of your own your know, self-motivation to plan out and take ownership over your own study schedule. So uh, that's one of the other problems I have with, with, with the, the live courses. So thanks for watching this video. Uh, in the next video, what I'm going to be doing is talking to you guys about some of the study resources that I do strongly recommend and which I personally relied upon uh, in order to get me the kind of score I wanted to get in my step one. So we'll see you guys then.